Okay, um, biasing transistors is all about Ohm's law and um, one way of remembering that for beginners, I was one once, so now it feels, you draw a pyramid or a triangle with a point upwards, then you draw a line through there and a line through there. The inverted V, looks like an inverted V, so that's a mnemonic, you put V there which stands for voltage okay and then either way round resistance is presented by R current is presented by I so if you've got two of the values and you don't know the third one you simply cover the one you don't know up so you go you remember that voltage divided by resistance gives you the current um, cover R up voltage divided by the current gives you the resistance if you cover the V up, as you don't know, what would be the voltage? If you've got a certain resistance and a certain current, then you multiply the resistance times the current. One thing I'm always doing is I tend to get a little bit mixed up and I forget that you've got to um, remember that, say for example, two milliamps, which is what we will be working with, is represented by zero point zero zero two amps another way of doing it would be to put two as in amps divide it by a thousand and you'll end up with the same amount and then you could put that into the calculator's memory perhaps now um the first the first stage of designing what we want uh in how we want the transistor to perform is to decide how much current we want flowing through it. Now we've already done the output stage, that was a previous upload. So we'll draw the transistor, I mean I'll do it the old fashioned way, it's such a habit I can't break it. So this is a typical, this is an NPN or BC5, NPN BC337 transistor. We've got the resistor there like that and then we've got the positive supply that goes there. Posit in this instance we've got positive 3 volts. That is the earth or the ground and that goes to the negative of the battery. Neg of bat. All right. Um, That would be the input. So what are these two values? We've got that one. We don't know what it's going to be. Now using Ohm's law, we need to, we're looking, this is, this is often referred to as the Q point. And we, at there we want half supply. Now, if we've got a three volt um, battery there, obviously we're looking at 1.5 volts at that point. So what we can do is we can do a division. 1.5 divided by 0 0.002 and that will give us the resistance so that resistor there must equal 750 ohms right now we're going to build um, our circuit 680 ohms and um, that would be oh, 56k so there's our transistor. Now what we do is, it's very important to identify the uh, legs of a transistor, uh, the leads. Um, if the if the flat is facing, I mean, I tend to work from, like when you read a book, you work from left to right. So I, my, my brain cell <laughs> works in a similar sort of way in that I've got a mnemonics. For example, that there is the flat area and it's got the actual... Um, 
and the transistor type number printed on it. So I always remember the flat is the same as this flat thing here, which is the base. So therefore, that would be the collector, that would be the emitter. So this is this is the collector, that lead there. That would be the base, the one I'm holding on to, and that would be the emitter. That's this one. Getting it the wrong way around means your circuit simply won't work at all. Um, you know, and you know, whereas you're not really worried about damaging a transistor since they're only about 10p each or something, how much they cost these days. You buy them in lots of 10 or 100 or something and pay about five quid. I'm not really sure, but they're made in so many vast quantities. And of course, chips are taking over. Should also mention that if you can't be bothered with all of this nonsense, worrying about biasing and all the rest of it, you could actually buy yourself from eBay um, uh, an amplifier chip, LM386. And for a couple of quid, I think the last one I bought was, you get the whole lot in there. Uh, you get the printed circuit board. You get all the components and the chip. And a load of instructions on how to solder it together. So what's the point of doing this? Well, obviously we're going the wrong way around things. And we're doing it out of curiosity. We want to learn. The whole object of this is to learn how to design transistor stages. Purely because it's just something you might want to do. I mean, I'm not saying there's any financial benefit from doing this. But um, it certainly made me feel a lot better during... Um, difficult times in my life sometimes I like all of us we'll get fed up from time to time so just get a little spark of enthusiasm I wonder what will happen if I you know like for example the last one was oh how about building a found a little chip um SN76477N single chip synthesizer and I thought oh let's uh, build that up and you know have a go and that so now we've got to provide the supply. Now one thing about the older LM386 chip is if you, if you ask guitarists their opinion of it, it's usually lots and lots of guitar amps and those little um, guitars with built-in amplifiers, you know, um, you can get them. They've all got, often you'll find they've got an LM386 inside them as the amplifying device. And the gain is quite astounding. I mean, you know, you get one chip and it actually can be driven by uh, the humbucker of a guitar. And it will output about what? 940 milliwatts is incredible. Very powerful things. But they're often described as the crappy LM386. Now, there are reasons why that could be so. First of all, the EQ of an M386 is um, it's got a little bit too much bottom end bass and the other reason why they might sound not very good for a guitar is the fact that the input impedance of one of these kits if you build it up um, is 5k ohms well guitar in order to operate correctly needs an impedance of at least I think 200k if not more and often you'll find um, say for example the ZVEX super hard on um, they've put something like a 1 meg ohm or 10 meg actually as the input impedance and using um, a BS I think 170 MOSFET metal oxide silicon transistor or FET of some sort I'm not sure what and um, the idea of that is to get the highest possible impedance so the guitar sounds good and it doesn't get loaded so that is one reason now if you if you feel like you want to design an LM386 guitar amp and I've done it many times it can sound good if you're prepared to build a one transistor matching booster matching and booster circuit 
Now um, we set the potentiometer to maximum resistance and that's minimum current flowing through the junction of the transistor. We put negative there of the meter, the multimeter, and the positive on the collector. Actually, I've just realised done it wrong. That doesn't go there, you hoof bag. <laughs> goes there. So um, I heard this interesting anecdote about a, psych a psychiatrist who doesn't believe in ME. ME CFS is quite a, an unpleasant illness to suffer from and unfortunately I happen to be one of those people and it ain't a lot of fun, believe me. What makes it worse is the scepticism you get from psychiatrists who seem to think, think you know, think they know better than everybody else and they're not prepared to listen and they come out with the stupidest reasons for why people suffer. Anyway, it's an interesting anecdote. One of them was um, a psychiatrist lost his wallet on the way. The psychiatrist who doesn't believe in ME lost his wallet on the way to a shop selling telescopes and binoculars. Went into the shop and he says, have you got a pair of binoculars, please? Yeah. Oh, sod it, he says. I think I've lost my wallet. So the shopkeeper says, well, there's an easy answer. What you do, if you can't afford or you cannot at this moment buy a pair of binoculars, just stand closer to the item you're wanting, wishing to look at. <laughs> so there you are. There's my uh, psychiatrist doesn't believe in ME joke, which I tend to forget. So anyway, now let's power up. So I've got this little nine, three volt battery. I keep saying nine volts. It's not, it's three. The whole point of this three volt battery idea is, first of all, I'm curious about what level the, vo the thing can go down to in the way of volts. Commonly, it's nine volts and you do get a higher gain from each of the transistor stages if you're using high voltage. So this eventually might need four stages just to get to 100 milliwatts output from the speaker. So there we go. That's powered up now. There is power in the circuit. So between the, um, we've got 1.9 volts, so it's close. If I was to disconnect it, it would just jump to uh, the same voltage, it would jump to 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust this to increase the current flowing through the junction. And we want to get 1.5. It's a noisy pot. It's jumping around a bit. There we are, nearly there. 1.5 volts. 1.49, 1.51. Not worried about it. So now we can power down. Then using the same meter, measure the resistance. Once you've measured the resistance, you write it down. Good idea. Switch to um, now. This is a 100k pot, so the nearest, the, the slightly above that would be 200k. Put to one. If you put to 20k, it won't do anything. So we connect that there and measure the resistance. 55.9k. I must admit. Um, I did I did do a lot of this stuff beforehand, so 55.9 is very close to 56. So that's why I have a 56k ohm resistor to hand. All right, we know that. Turn the meter off to save the battery. This is uh, this blue Peter thing going on here. You see the old television series. I don't know if it's on for kids anymore. I don't watch telly, I watch YouTube, um, so I don't need a telly licence, as far as I'm aware. I'm not getting one because I can't afford it, honestly. So anyway, in Blue Peter, they always 
did things before and you'll find that the thing they bought out which they did before looks about 10 times better than than, than anyone could do for themselves so we're now fitting in a um, resistor between the collector and the base now some books i've come across most many of them about biasing transistors uh just the th theoretical books often will, will indicate that this uh resistor the positive end goes to the actual um goes to the h you know the supply rail of three volts in this instance or nine volts and of course that was done in the early days until they discovered that the transistors were failing they were getting hotter and hotter until they popped and they didn't work anymore and it doesn't matter if you're using a very very low current it will still pop um, and the reason why is because of thermal runaway now the reason why we often where well, we now with a very simple collector base bias connect this resistor between the collector and base is as the transistor gets hotter through thermal runaway and all transistors uh, i don't think all, tran all bipolar transistors suffer from it i don't think mosfets do but i'm not sure power mosfets i don't think they do so as this transistor increases the thermal runaway that the actual resistance between the collector and the emitter junction lowers allowing more current well if this actually point q decides to drop even lower less voltage is applied to this resistor so therefore the whole thing regulates its own temperature so this is a sort of temperature compensated circuit it would be interesting to demonstrate um, globe, um, thermal thermal runaway um, on, on another subject another upload so anyway, we'll now connect the um, the meter again and we'll take voltage measurements to see if the thing's correct see if it works properly oops always doing that 1.48 volts that is perfectly okay now another another interesting point is that some people get confused a transistor will always a silicon transistor will always be correctly biased and functioning normally if there is between 0.6 and 0.7 volts between its emitter and base we'll measure that right now 0.64 perfect if it goes above or below that it either saturates or it decides not to work because there is no bias anyway well you know as this is a continuation uh, thank you for watching and subscribe if you want to okay thank you bye